Thank you, Father, for the time that you have given us. In this age, O oh Lord, you are looking for those who can represent you without fear. We pray sincerely as we listen to your word. We may have a desire to be your honest children. In Jesus' name, amen. My brothers and sisters, I want to welcome you all in a very special way today. My name is Kudzaich Gogora. This is the Herald Report Ministry. We are truly grateful for what God has done for us and allowing us to be together. Therefore, I welcome you all wherever you are following us from. My brothers and sisters, it is a blessing and a joy as we focus, as we open the word together and as we look at what is happening in the world, the fulfillment of the prophecy and the nearing of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today let's focus on this topic, gender neutral God to be considered by the Church of England. Push for LGBTQ equality at Grammys. Uh, this is very interesting and I just want you to understand that my brothers and sisters, uh, what is happening, there is a confederacy, there is a confederacy of rebellion. There is a coordination of rebellion. If you remember last week we covered the subject about uh, the papacy also pushing for the inclusivity of the LGBT community. And uh, today we see this total rebellion which is happening in the Church of England and also the promotion of the LBG, uh, LGBTQ uh, community at the Grammys as well. Now let me remind you what we covered a few days ago. This was actually on the 25th of January in Papal Fest, uh, uh, in Papal Fest, Francis Beck's discrimination of uh, homosexuality, not a crime. So he was saying homosexuality is not a crime. Yes, it is a sin, therefore, but let's accept them. So we covered this very well. The presentation is on YouTube. You can actually watch it. But today the situation is on another level and we are looking at what is happening in the Church of England. You know, the Church of England basically is an extension of the Catholic Church. It's basically an extension of the Catholic Church. But the Church of England has gone a bit, uh, it's much further than many other congregations as they are leading in the debate on LGBTQ. Now look at the subhead, the topic. Church of England should avoid only calling God he, Bishop says. So this is recorded in the Telegraph. This was on the 16th of September. This was in 2016. So I want you to, uh, I want you to follow this very well. This was the first recording was in 2016. There is a female bishop called uh, 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 Rachel Twek. Uh, she's, she was a bishop of Gloucester. I'm not sure whether she is still there now. And she was the first female bishop. And uh, she said, I don't want girl, young girls or young boys to hear us constantly refer to God as he, adding that it was important to be mindful of our language. So her suggestion is that we don't need to call God he anymore. Uh, this language is not good for our young boys and our young girls. We want to have a language which is more inclusive. My brothers and sisters, this is very interesting. Number one, I want you to understand this. The one who is talking, this lady, she is called uh, uh, Rachel Trewick. To start with, she is a lady and she has got this misguided thought that she can be a bishop. And now she is representing many other ladies who think they could be bishop. And the Bible is very clear on who a bishop can be. So therefore, this argument is misplaced. Number one, it's being argued from a point of rebellion where somebody is assuming the office of a bishop when in actual fact they are not qualified to be bishops. Now the Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 2, a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Already, the bishop, the word bishop refers to a male. The moment you say someone is a bishop, he is a male. So the fact that this lady, she is arguing from the point of bishop, it actually means she is arguing from a point of rebellion. She does not qualify to be a bishop. Now let's go to the second witness. 
Titus chapter 1 verse 5, For this cause left I thee in Crita, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city that I had appointed thee. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife. Yes, blameless, the husband of one wife, not the wife of one husband, the husband of one wife. Therefore, the lady has missed the point. The lady is standing in rebellion. The lady is doing something which is very contrary to what God has called her for. She has a desire to save God, yes, maybe, but however, not as a bishop because she cannot qualify to be a bishop. Therefore, whatever she say makes no sense. She is arguing from the point of rebellion. Now look at the paper, it says, she raised concern that many Christians could feel alienated from the church if its public pronouncement used solemnly male language to describe God. Who are these nanny Christians she was referring to? None other than the community of LGBT. Now look at the next paragraph. The, uh, another uh, says, Bishop of, the, the Bishop of Docking said the tendency to use male language was a growing problem as language use in general become more gender balanced. In other words, in the Church of England, they are saying we cannot remain in the old time religion. We need to move with time. Let's find a language which is gender balanced. It's very important to realize that the Church of England is not led by the Bible. No, the Church of England is a state church. And what they are now, their religion is being shaped by what is happening in the world rather than what the Bible say. So to them, what is happening in the world defines what they are to what they ought to do rather than the Bible. Now look at the next paragraph. Clegi. Clegi echoed the concern with the uh, with Sally Hitchner, Anglican uh, chaplain at Brunel University my former university, arguing that it is heretical to say God is only male. So now this is heretical to say God is only male. She said there was a movement across the nation, church, national church, with events organized to emphasize the feminine nature of God. Yes, they can organize what they want to organize. This was in 2016. So they've been campaigning against calling God a uh, he. And they would rather have names that are a, an inclusive way of calling God. But now the debate has matured. That's why now it's surfacing greatly. Look at this. This was uh, 7th of February 2023, only a few days ago. It says, gender neutral God to be considered by Church of England. Move has been criticized by conservatives who have warned that male and female imagery is not interchangeable. Now look at what it says. For decades, the gender of God has prompted debate within the church with many calling for male pronouns, he and him, as well as reference to our father to be scrapped in favor of either gender neutral or female alternatives. Now is that, now in what would mark a departure from centuries of tradition, bishops are to launch a project on gender language referencing God in church service later this year. So this has been going on for some time now. And they are saying we cannot call God He. Neither should we uh, pray to our Father. Let's find a something neutral. Uh, in other words, uh, <laughs> whatever the Bible is saying now is now no longer applicable to our community. If there was a Church of England, the Church of England was yesterday, not today. As they departed from the truth, they ceased to be a church. It's now a club for those who are following it. It says the move has been criticized by conservatives who have warned that male and female Im imagery is not interchangeable. However, liberal Christians have welcomed it, claiming that a theological misreading of God as exclusively male is a drive of much continuing discrimination and sexism against women. Okay, that's fine. So now you've got these two kinds of people. 
there is conservatives. There are conservatives who say, no, we cannot interchange male and female. These are interchangeable terms. But there are those who are liberals. And liberals, they are happy to compromise. They are happy to find a, a neutral language. They are happy to add and to subtract from the Bible. But now, my brothers and sisters, liberality is one of the worst cancers you find in Christianity. In fact, liberality is sin. That's why you find that, you know, God is against the spirit of liberalism. The spirit of liberalism is the spirit of the devil. Let me actually read from Reflecting Christ, page 363, paragraph 7. It says, in this age of uh, boasted liberality, these words would be branded as bigotry. But the apostle teaches that while we should manifest Christian courtesy, we are authorized to call sin and sinners by their right names. Now, we are to call sin and sinners by their right name. Homosexuality is sin. Being a gay is sin. Cohabitation is sin. Adultery is sin. And my brothers and sisters, we cannot change the language of the Bible. Or should we change the narrative of the Bible to accommodate sin? Sin is sin. And the moment we decide to be liberal, my brothers and sisters, we have digressed from the word of God and will be working for the devil. It is the devil that attacks the word of God. Now it says um, that is consistent with true charity. To call sin by its rightful name is consistent with true charity. While we are to love the souls of whom Christ died and labor for their salvation, we should not make a compromise with sin. We are not to unite with the rebellious and call this charity. My brothers and sisters, yes, we are to love sinners, but to what we hate sin. We cannot sympathize with homosexuality. We cannot sympathize with LGBT uh, sins. We cannot afford to bless something which God has cursed. If something is diabolic before God, it is diabolic before God. Therefore, we cannot compromise on this sin of homosexuality. Now, you find that, you know, the reason why the Church of England is facing this serious problem, they started by ordaining women. And now they are compromising on the sin of homosexuality. They have no limitation. Now they are going right to the name of God, to the character of God. They are now questioning who God is exactly. In other words, you find that you know, what is happening in the Church of England will be followed by many churches. What is happening in the Church of England is actually not only in the Church of England. All those who have decided to ordain women, all those who have accepted homosexuals, they are following the footsteps very soon. They will seek to change the narrative of the Bible because the spirit that is working in them, it is the spirit of rebellion. My brothers and sisters, let's get this correctly. The moment we compromise on it, thus says the Lord, we are going to compromise again. And will continue to compromise. This is the reason why we have a serious debate today. Number one on creationism. Number two on homosexuality. This is all because we started compromising on women ordination. Now it says, this is Review and Herald. The time has fully come when darkness is called light and light is called darkness. Yes. When someone is living in homosexuality, in sin, we say that they are created like that. It's love. It's not love. No, it's not love. It can't be love. It can't be love. It's lasting. There is a difference between love and lasting. Lasting, this is a misguided feeling possessed by demonic the demon of adultery. That's why men can lust after men and women lust after women. Now it says we are living in an age when sham liberality is extolled, when those who scatter falsehood, false doctrine and so destroying heresies are received and extolled by society and the most terrible deeds of iniquity are glossed 
over and excused on the plea of charity. Even the voices from the pulpits of our land are saying, it shall be well with the tr transgressor. Sin is not dealt with as a thing of fearful consequences, destined to bring inevitable ruin upon those who persist in this indulgent. My brothers and sisters, this is the time that we are living in, where good is now bad and bad is now good, where right is now wrong and wrong is now right. And today it seems to be abnormal to to live a normal life. And to live an abnormal life has become abnormal. That's what the devil is doing. And we can see this playing within the Church of England. Now, let's go to the paper. It says, uh, the Rev. Joanna Stobart from the Dewes of Bath, Dewes of Bath and Wells asked what steps were being taken to offer congregates alternatives of referring to God with male pronouns and if there was any update to develop more inclusive language in our authorized liturgy. So, she wants to find out the progress which is taking place in the church. What are we doing to ensure that, you know what, we have changed the language? Ha! You know, I don't know the spirit in the Church of England, I tell you. Now look at uh, the professor. Helen King, the vice chairman of the Synod Gender and Sexuality Group said, questions around gender language and God have been around for decades, if not centuries. Now look at the, uh, the red words. For some, God as father is helpful because of their own positive experience of a loving parent. Listen to this language. For others, God as father may reinforce a bad experience of a strict disciplinarian is their father. If we dig deeper, clearly God is not gendered. So why do we restrict our language for God in gendered ways? It's actually very important to realize that most of these contributors to this are women. And uh, I'm not against women for I'm married. But I'm saying the challenge that we have is we have a desire for equality. We have a desire for God to be like us. Rather than we being like God, we want God to come down to be like us. My brothers and sisters, remember something. The church is the bride of Christ. The relationship of God and the church is like the husband and wife. When you look at the husband and wife relationship, it's an object lesson which God gave to humanity that we may understand his love to us. And there is an open blasphemy in the Church of England. And this is because of their acceptance on, 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 on homosexuality. And now they have no limitation. Remember the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2. For I am jealous over you with a godly jealous. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste vision to Christ. We relate to God as our father. The church relates to God as the husband. And the husband can never be female. The husband is always a father. The husband is regarded as a father and the husband is a male figure. That's the father figure. Let me give you another witness. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Paul is giving us an understanding that if we are to understand the relationship between the father and the church and God, let's look at the husband and wife. This is the position of the, uh, the, the, the uh, God being the husband of the church. Now, therefore, as the church said, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in that. In everything and now it says husbands love your wives even as also Christ loved the church and gave himself for it so now Christ is the real husband for the church what did he do he loved the church and he gave himself for the church so now the moment we talk of God he is a father the moment we talk of God he is referred as he, and he is given an allegory of 
the husband. So the moment we say that we don't want to call God he, we're actually saying we don't want to be the church of God. We want to be something else. What we see in the church of England, it's the total rebellion against God. They cannot wait to change the way how they address God. They are very eager to ensure that the language has changed. But my brothers and sisters, God still remains the same. Look at this. He says, a spokeswoman, a spokesman for women in the church, a national campaign group for gender equality in the Church of England, also welcomed the move. Look to look at the development of more inclusive language in our authorized liturgy. So in other words, uh, they are very much happy. They are very keen. But while that is happening in the Church of England, not everyone in the Church of England is of that same idea. There are those who actually say this is not the best and they argue against it. Now look at uh, what uh, Reverend uh, Ian Paul says. This is a member of the Synod. says, uh, he warned against any departure from original scripture saying, the use of male pronouns for God should not be understood as implying that God is male, which is heresy. God is not sex unlike humanity. Yes, God is different from human beings. The Bible uses feminine imagery and metaphors uh, of God, but primarily identifies God using masculine pronouns, names and imagery. Male and female imagery is not interchangeable. But of course, the LGBTQ wants to change that. It says the fact that God is called father can be substituted by mother without changing meaning, nor can it be gender neutralized to parent without loss of meaning. Fathers and mothers are not interchangeable, but relate to their offspring in different ways. If the liturgical commission seeks to change this, then in an important way, they will be moving the doctrine of the church away from being grounded in the scripture. Yes, they will be moving away from the scripture. And as they are moving away from the scripture, they will be joining the tradition just like the mother Catholic. It is very important, my brothers and sisters, to realize that these arguments are playing at the moment. I just want to play this following clip. This is an argument between a bishop of the Church of England who is also a homosexual and also an evangelical. Uh, listen, to, listen to the argument. There are still some people who believe the Bible in the Bible alone. And those people who believe the Bible in the Bible alone, may the Lord truly bless them. Graham Nichols, um, we had a comment just now from one of our viewers. He says, what next? Rewriting the Bible. But isn't the Bible a text which has been rewritten in very many editions over centuries? And isn't it always a challenge for every society to kind of put religion and God in um, the context of today? And in the context of today, isn't it kind of a fair question? Is God a man, a woman, or is God a greater power? Yeah, it's a great question because um, I don't think the Bible has been rewritten. I think the Bible is as uh, originally written down. That's what we've got. That's the great there's, thing there's about it. There's a St. James's version, the authorised version, the Good News sure. Bible. The prayer there's, book has yeah. been reconsidered yeah. by the church many, many times over the, uh, the centuries. It, it's all been rewritten. Yeah, yeah but the, the prayer book is not the same as the Bible. And the Bible well, the is... The Bible's been rewritten lots of times. We have not rewritten lots of times. There's lots of translations, but of the original scriptures written in Greek and Hebrew and... I'm a little bit of Aramaic. So uh, that's lots not of the evangelical churches use the Good News Bible. There's not lots of that's just a different translation, but I, th I think that's well, quite it's not. Point. We're just talking translations, we're not talking about revisions or changing. Uh, of course, you have to understand what the original words in the Greek or Hebrew meant. Um, but um, I mean, I'm not a curtain, curtain twitcher, I think it's a, it's a good debate about uh, uh, how best to refer to God, but I think how best to refer to God is how he's referred to in the Bible. And uh, although some mother attributes are spoken about, it's, he's referred to as a father and uh, in male terms. And that's how a lot of the, the, the language of the Bible works. So I think it's more about trying to uh, uh, accommodate to culture in an unhelpful way um, and, and not a good way. Let me... And finally, Graham Nichols, um, 
apparently MPs are considering bringing the Church of England into line with the law of the land, equalities law, on this. Chris Bryant, who is a Labour MP, chair of the Standards of Privileges Committee, a former Anglican priest, said the church's position currently is causing very real pain and if the church won't act, Parliament should give it a push. Can you imagine that happening? And what would be the effect? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really understand the politics of uh, the Church of England and, and all its connections, but I think in terms of justice, it seems very unfair that when gay marriage was brought in by the Cameron government, there was a, a very uh, specific promise that uh, churches in general, and the Church of England in particular, would be able to opt out of that. And uh, talking about disestablishment or some kind of compulsion or, or very heavy push from Parliament to, to change that, uh, you know, less than a decade afterwards seems grossly unfair. Um, and so, yeah, I think that that would not be right. But, you know, but in the end, uh, uh, I don't mind what the Parliament does or or in a sense what the Church of England hierarchy does. We as, as Christians and Christian leaders have to do what our conscience says and how we read the Bible. We want to love people. We want to include people. But we don't think marrying same-sex couples is right. All right. Well, Graham Nichols, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. I mean... Does it does it hurt you, Charlie? Bell? Does it hurt your the people you know and love? I mean, you know, I want to marry my partner in church. That's certainly the case. And your partner uh, is my partner, Peter. Um, right. And uh, we've been together for a fair amount of time. Um, we got engaged last week. We're very keen to to get married. So it does hurt me in a sense that that on a personal level that we can't do that. But what breaks my heart more is seeing faithful, decent, loving Christian couples who happen to be uh, in relationships with someone of the same sex come to me in church and be and I'm unable to offer them anything at the moment. Today's vote in synod might allow me to at least bless them. But I long for that day when we can say to them. You you know, all that we see that is so good about who you are and your relationship and your love and your family and like all that you're doing for the community and the church, all of that is blessed by God. And I just long to be able to do that. Thank you God. very much indeed. As we can see what is happening from the clit, the Bible is the sole authority of Christianity. But however, if we want to behave as the bishops of the Church of England, we may do that, but at our own peril. And I commend you to the Bible in the Bible alone. And I just want to say to you, my brothers and sisters, the push from uh, the LGBTQ, it's serious. And this push and uh, this subject is being pushed from all over. As you can see, what is happening in the United States and in what is happening in the world. In fact, uh, let me actually start from the beginning of the, uh, the article. It says, this is regard the president, is, as he was addressed, he followed the pro-abortion remarks by using Congress to also pass the Bipartisan Equality Act to ensure LGBTQ Americans, especially transgender young people, can live with safety and dignity. That bill would amend the 1964 Civil Rights Act to include sex sexual orientation and gender identity among expressly recognized non-discrimination categories in public accommodations. So in other words, all these things that, that seem to separate people or that seem to uh, uh, discriminate, we want to remove them. Now, but however, look at the conservative arguing. The conservative argue that it would not merely protect homosexual or gender confused Americans from actual harm, but rather force religious adoption agencies to place children in same sex homes for force the likes of photographers, florists and bakers to participate in same sex wedding, force employees and business businesses to accommodate cross-dressing and sex change treatments regardless of their own values or policies and force women and girls to share sleeping quarters, showers, changing areas, restrooms and sex-specific athletic competition with gender-confused males. So this would be a very serious bill, is it? It will actually cause quite a lot of problems and this is a push from the Congress is a push from the President of the United States of America. Let's make this Equality Act. 
let's include the LGBT. Let them feel at home. We see it in the Church of England, and the Church of England has gone much further to ensure that let's actually not relate to God as our Father so that the LGBT community is comfortable. But as that, as that is not enough, the entertainment industry, the music industry, is pushing the same. Now look at the headline. This is from this paper, Variety. It says, Sam Smith, Kim Petras, brings Saturn cages and whips for Grammys in fairy and holy performance. Now this was very interesting. This was uh, written on the 5th of February. Now look at the, it says, Sam Smith just outdid their recent Saturday Night Live performance with unholy collaborate Kim Petras in a horror movie inspired performance of this smash hit. Smith started the song in red leather, surrounded a flood of danced dancers that invoked Samara from the ring before cutting to Petras dancing in a cage flanked by some domina Tresses wearing satanic headgear. Smith also donned a satanic top hat as hug flames heated up the stage. Now the question is, why were they behaving like this? Why what were they trying to do? Where were they getting their inspiration? Do you know, my brothers and sisters, nothing is further from the truth. The entertainment industry is being led, is being inspired by the devil himself and these are members of the of the lgbtq now i want you to look at the i'm, I'm going to you see the video shortly but i just want you to have a look at um uh, i want to i want to go to this speech look at the speech it says uh, now this is a speech uh, from um uh, from uh, from one of them, it says uh, from uh, from uh, it says um, some graciously wanted me to accept this award because I'm the first transgender woman to win this award. She said to cheers and many of the musicians in the crowded giving her a standing ovation. I just want to thank all of the incredible transgender legends before we before me who kicked these doors open before me so i could be here tonight sophie my friend who passed away two years ago who told me this would happen and always believed in me thank you so much for your inspiration sophie i adore you and your inspiration will forever be in my music the inspiration is from sophie who is long dead and uh, she was inspired and she was told this could happen by the way he was inspired and he was told this could happen now look at this it says uh, when asked about the fairy performance backstage petra said it was inspired by not feeling accepted by religion why was he not accepted by religion? Because he is a member of the LGBTQ or he practiced homosexuality. So because he felt he was not accepted, he decided then to be satanic. And uh, it says they were the first ones to open the door. They were the first LGBT to have uh, a LGBTQ community to receive this award. So they've opened the door for many other LGBTQs. But you know what? I'm just reading. I want you to listen to the comments from these people. Now listen to this following clip. Hear what uh, this, they, they, they say regarding the spirit that is pushing them and also regarding those people who are very sympathetic to them. They push from the entertainment industry. And the Grammy goes to... Unholy, Sam Smith and Kim Petras.
Thank you so much. Um, crazy, Sam, I love you so much. And this song has been such an incredible, incredible journey for me. And Sam has been a supporter of mine for so long. Um, Sam graciously wanted me to accept this award because I'm the first uh, transgender woman to win this award. <laughs> and, and I'm so... Thank you. Um, and I just want to thank um, all the incredible transgender legends before me who kicked these doors open for me so I could be here tonight. Um, Sophie, especially um, my friend who passed away two years ago, who told me this would happen and always believed in me. Um, thank you so much for your inspiration, Sophie. Um, I adore you and uh, your inspiration will forever be in my music. Um, Madonna for fighting for LGBTQ rights. Um, so much, I don't think I could be here without Madonna. Um, my mother, um, I grew up uh, next to a highway no, in nowhere, Germany. And my mother believed me that I was a girl and um, I wouldn't be here without her um, and her support. <laughs> and now my, bro my brothers and sisters, let me say to you, the Bible is very clear. God created male and female. The world is now ripe for destruction. And the only delay is that God's church is not ready. God is calling us to repent. God is appealing to the LGBT community to repent. My brothers and sisters, let me take you to this quotation from the Great Controversy, page 472. If men feel no weight for the moral law, if they belittle and make light of God's precepts, if they break one of the least of these commandments, and teach men so, they shall be of no, they shall be of no esteem in the sight of heaven. And we may know that their claims are without foundation. If we take lightly the commandments of God, if we take lightly what God says, whatever we are doing will be of no use. My brothers and sisters, God wants us to be sympathetic with his children. He does not want us to sympathize with sin. We are not to be liberals. We need to call sin by its rightful name. Sin is sin. Whether it's done by who or whether it's done by which, whatever the position of somebody, sin is sin. And remember last week we read the verse from Romans chapter uh, 3. And verse 31 says, uh, 31 describes those, it says, without understanding covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who know in the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. That's why my brothers and sisters, the evangelical pastor was very explicit to say that, you know what, Homosexuality is sin and will continue to teach what the Bible says and what the Bible says holds. It doesn't matter that our feelings are hurt. The desire of God is that when our feelings are hurt, then we may repent. Now it says a terrible picture of the condition of the world has been presented before me. Immorality abounds everywhere. Licentiousness is the special sin of this age. Never did vice lift its deformed head with such boldness as now, as we can see in the Church of England. The people seem to be numbed, and the lovers of virtue and true godliness are nearly discouraged by its boldness. Yes, it seems as if uh, now sin has taken over, and nobody wants to rise up and say no to sin. Strength and, and prevalence. 
I was referred to Romans chapter 1 verse 18 to 32 as a true description of the world previous to the second appearing of Christ. Just before the second appearing of Christ, the world will be like Sodom. However, in all that, the people of God will make a choice. And you know, Joshua said in Joshua chapter 24 verse 15, Choose ye this day whom you save. And I want to say to you, my brothers and sisters, we need to make a choice. Are we going to go by the Bible? Or are we going to go by what society prefers? Are we going to go by the Bible? Or are we going to go by what the Church of England prefers? And Joshua said, as for me in my house, I'll save the Lord. And my brothers and sisters, we are coming to a point where we need to make a decision and we'll defend our faith by the truth that we have lived, that we have received, and we'll stand on the platform of truth irregardless of what it takes. I call on you, my brothers and sisters, to make a decision. Truth is truth, whether you like it or not. Truth is truth, and it is it has nothing to do with our opinions. Our opinions are irrelevant. Truth will triumph over every error. And truth, my brothers and sisters, has stood the test of time. Whatever can happen in the world, it will not change what God has said. And my brothers and sisters, I commend you to the truth of the Bible. Let's contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. Shall we pray? Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In this world where right is now wrong and wrong is now right, Lord, give us grace and wisdom that we may stand on the platform of truth. Blessed be your name, Father, for your good who okay, in Jesus' name. Amen. Until then, my brothers and sisters, I look forward to see you in the next edition. God bless you. Remember to subscribe. Remember to share. And let's continue to pray for one another in Jesus' name. Amen.